Yeah. This isn't your first rodeo? Oh, it, it would be my first rodeo, but it's, it's, it's not my first go around with you. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, Pops, Ray, Dad, yeah. Brad. Uh, yes. Here's what I was thinking we talked about today. I've had this frustration when working for our customers. Our customers come to us with this frustration. It's the title of this video. Why the heck are the advertised prices for cars online never what they actually are when you get that detailed pricing breakdown from the salesperson? Can you, in your infinite wisdom, in your 40 plus years of experience, explain that to me and to our audience? It's so frustrating. You want the simple explanation? Well, we average like 15 to 20 minute videos. So I, I'd give the simple explanation now so everyone can leave and then you and me can banter for about 20 okay. minutes. Oh, okay, it's, the simple explanation is, is, that, is that dealers and dealer personnel think that customers are morons. <laughs> and, and, and so in order for them to attract the customer to come to them, they have to advertise this price that nobody qualifies for, you know, because it might reflect every rebate that the manufacturer offers, uh, such as, hey, you a recent college graduate? You, uh, you active or retired military? You a first responder? Did you graduate from Temple University? Uh, what corporation do you work for? And then in the fine print, you'll see that uh, not everybody qualifies for every rebate that's listed in there. You know, it's just, it's bullshit. It is, it, I, I, I'm sorry to get, to get so ranty about this, but it's the same bullshit that dealerships have been fostering onto the customers for years, okay? And most dealerships and most dealership personnel won't give customers enough credit to, to, I don't know, just give them the truth. I think it was in the movie, A Few Good Men with Jack Nicholson. And he said, yeah. you want the truth? You can't handle the truth. Well, my <laughs> theory is the public really could handle the truth. Well, but, but, but dad, don't they face the competition of you go on Auto Trader, you go on Car Gurus, you go on any of the websites, right? And that's where I, I was reading some stat. It's like 92% of all car purchases start with online research. Most I like researching cars. Our audience likes researching cars. We all hate negotiating cars. So you're going to start with a Google search, right? Yes. Mm -hmm. So as a dealership, and I want you to share some insight here, whatever you feel comfortable sharing. As a dealership, you do need to show up as the lowest price or else you're going to get buried to the bottom. Because when you go on car gurus, you go on auto trader, you never make it to page eight. You know what I mean? So isn't, isn't that the rationale? And it, again, I'm playing devil's advocate here because I trust me, I, it drives me crazy that you can't get the actual number. Well, it is the rationale. I mean, you know, you want to you want to appear on the first page. The likelihood of somebody clicking through to the second page is it, it reduces dramatically. So, yeah, dealers use these bogus pricing to attract your attention to get you to click through. Um, it's it's no different than any other clickbait. Yeah. But but the unfortunate reality is that. A lot of people won't respond to the dealers that try to do it legitimately. And that's because dealerships for the past century have done so many things in an illegitimate fashion that it's very hard to change people's perceptions. And it's even harder to convince people that you're not a crook when all they thought all their life is that you are a crook. Who, um, who makes this call within the dealership, right? Like, is it the general manager? Is it the internet manager? Is it through your, I, I, every single dealership website's on dealer.com, which is owned by Cox Automotive, which owns Mannheim, which owns Kelly Blue Book, which we should do a whole video on that, that bullshit of how they, you know, monopolize the whole car industry. But who makes the decision to say either we're going to put up the legit price and we're going to be buried on the eighth page or we're going to play the game and we're going to, we're going to have to, you know, really let people down when, when they look at the quote, and it's $6,000 more for the out the door price. Um, I, I don't want to sound superficial, um, but it's the guy who, whose name's on the building. It's the dealer. Okay. The, the dealer, the dealer decides 
how they're going to do business. And this is a decision that dealers have to make. Here's what I found on the web. Oh, well, thank you, Google. But <laughs> now's not the time. Um, here's here's the, the decision dealerships have to make. Do I want to have business practices that allow me to sell every person in my area one car who would never end up buying a second car from me because of the way we treated them to e either get them in the door or once they were in the door, how we treated them? Or do I want to sell a few people many cars because I treated them well? Yeah. Okay. And most dealers subscribe to the first way of doing business. Very few dealers subscribe to the second way of doing business. And most dealers, well, were former car salespeople. Um, and, and this is what they learned. And this, this, is, this is what they know. Um, should it be this way? Absolutely not. I mean, it shouldn't. I, I, I mean, you know, I've, I've worked with some of the stuff on websites in the past for dealers. And, and, you know, we would try to put a blurb that, you know, we're not here to tell you that the price doesn't include transportation because everybody had to pay the transportation to get there anyway, that we're not going to tell you that it includes rebates that, well, you're not going to qualify for. Yeah. You know, we want to be the legitimate dealer and you have to decide whether or not that's important to you. Um, I, I know that there were any number of times that I would have customer contact and the customer would say to me, well, the other guy lied to me, but his price is a little better than yours. Oh, and, my, and my response was, well, you've got this really ugly dilemma, this moral dilemma that you have to deal with. Do you want to reward the guy that lied to you to get you to have contact with them? Or do you want to reward the guy that, I don't know, try telling you the truth from the beginning? It's up to you. If morally you're okay with people lying to you, then go do business with them. Yeah. If, 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 as I used to like to say, if the truth is going to preclude us from making a car deal, then so be it. If, if you need me to lie to you to get you to come in to buy the car, you're talking to the wrong guy. I want to ask you a question. You don't have to answer it. Um, and, and honestly, if we need to even cut this part out, that's fine. Do you think that your approach, that moral approach, held you back in your career? Uh, do I? You know, I, I, I think I have customers that are not customers, they're friends now. They started as customers, yeah. Okay, but they ended up being friends because of the way I approached doing business. Do I think it held me back? I'm sure it probably did. Did it, did it hold back some of the growth of some of the dealerships that I might have been able to work at? I'm sure perhaps it might have, but it allowed me to sleep well at night. Yeah. Okay, I, I, I always preach to my salespeople, you don't need to lie, cheat, or steal to sell a car. If it's the right thing to do or say, do it or say it. If it's the wrong thing to do or say, don't do it or don't say it. And if you're not sure if it's the right thing or the wrong thing, let's err on the side of caution and assume that it's wrong. So don't do it and don't say it. Now, for the record, as a child growing up, I also heard that line every once in a while. <laughs> No, it's just, I mean, that's just me. Now, I, you know, I, I, don't re I don't represent the majority of the people in the car business. I, I, I represent a very small minority of the people in the car business. But one of my goals was to do whatever I could to change the stigma that was associated with being in the car business and to change the way that we did things. And they were baby steps. They were incremental changes that I was able to bring about in the dealerships that I worked at. Um, you know, it wasn't like, you know, one, one small step, one giant step for mankind. It, <laughs> you know, it was just a lot of small steps trying to, trying to find dealers that I could work with whose philosophies were aligned with mine. No, I, I hear you loud and clear. Uh, mm. and, and as you're describing this, it, it makes a lot of sense to me. I can really sit here and think when I'm, you know, I went to the University of Pittsburgh for a year before I dropped out. and Bobby Rahal, I think, is like the big dealer there. He's yeah. the one making the call or whoever, you know, 
Yeah. Coming from the Ray Hall family. I mean, yeah. if we're going to be the ones that through our marketing company that runs our websites and does all of our ads on car gurus and auto trader and cars.com, if we're going to be the low ball people that get all the leads on the line, but then we show them the, the out the door price and it's gone up by 10%, then that's how they're going to do business. That's the person that makes that decision. That makes a lot, that resonates with me, Deb. Well, well here, let's, let's take it just a step further. Okay. If we may. Okay. Um, you came to me with a concept for a business that you would like to run. Yeah. Uh, your auto Yeah. Okay. And, and you came to me and said, well, how are we going to do pricing and yeah. who are we going to make our money from? And one of the conversations we had was, well, can't we also get paid by the car dealer? And my, my response to you was we could, but that would be unethical. Yeah. You can't, you can't be both a, a buyer's agent and re, and also receiving uh, remuneration from the seller. You're, you're not being fair to the buyer. So you, you had to make a decision in the business that you're now running. Yeah. How did you, how did you want to do business? Did you want to do it ethically or did you want to do it unethically? Did you want, did you have to make a moral decision as to how we were going to do this? And morally speaking, it makes the most sense to only have our income from helping people get cars coming from the people we're helping yep. and not from the dealerships that are selling them. Yeah, so, that, that's a really good parallel and, and obviously one that hits home for me because it, yeah, it, now our livelihood is derived from that decision. And yeah, you're right. I sleep better at night because of it, because we don't get a kickback or anything like that. It, it makes sense. But so then I have a question for you, Ray, which is, you know, I don't think we've done a video on, you know, how to approach negotiating cars. So maybe we should do more content around that to help people. Because what I'm about to say is maybe the right way to approach doing research for cars is actually the bass backwards way. When you search online, instead of sorting by best deal or sorting by lowest to highest, sort from highest to lowest. Look at the ones that actually might be out of your budget, but are realistic. Uh, and then try and negotiate on them. Of course, you know, make an offer that feels comfortable for you. But those prices that seem way too high, I can't believe I'm saying this. Maybe they're the ones that are actually right. If, if there, there's an old saying, if something seems too good to be true, it is. Okay. <laughs> um, use your common sense. If some dealer has the same car as somebody else, but it's $4,000 less than anybody else's comparable car, there's a reason. It's too good to be true. They're lying. They're omitting things. They're, they're utilizing rebates and incentives that you don't qualify for. Why, why do you want to do business with people like that? Um, you know, oftentimes I'll get quotes for things that I need and I won't go with the lowest quote and I might not necessarily go with the highest quote, but I, I, I might go with the middle quote because, well, the guy deserves to make a living. Yeah, well, also partly what I'll bring up with cars is there's been so much antiquated, shady stuff. It's not, I don't think you, it, it's not, it's not an apples to apples comparison with, um, you know, any other type of service. Like if you, if you've got people that come and clean your house or something like yeah, that. Yeah, you know? I, I get it. Um, and also what, one of the things I'll mention with regards to price and, and the same car, I think one of the things that I struggle with as a consumer and in, in the business, obviously, they've gotten a lot better with this, but I imagine our audience struggles with this as well, is finding the apples to apples comparison of two cars at two different dealerships, right? Um, you know, one of the things that you taught me about very early on was on new cars, you have the Monroney label. You know, that is every single thing. And then there might be a dealer addendum window sticker as well. And I'll link to the Monroney label video that Ray did in the, in the description below. It's really it's good. I mean, Ray just explained what a Monroney label is, including the state senator who, who brought it about. Um, you know, but once you, if you don't know to look for a window sticker, especially online, and sometimes they make it kind of tricky on the dealer websites to get to the window sticker, or if you're looking at used cars, I empathize. I empathize a lot with, you know, trying to understand, well, why is this one $4,000 more than the other one? I think they're the same thing, but then this one's got this added package. Or so many times that I get the quotes from the dealerships for our clients and, you know, I'm, I'm asking for the detailed uh, best, most competitive out the door price you got to start with. 
and on the on the list it's got you know some dealer added bullshit like oh we we added this 499 dollars safe car package and i email back what is the safe car package that i did not request well it's a dealer added please take it off <laughs> you know like and and you talk about this in our video about how do car dealerships make money you can uh, sell cars, you can finance cars, you can service cars, or you can accessorize cars. And you talk about one of the, the, the ways that you would, not a trick, but like to sell parts, you couldn't just sell parts, you had to accessorize cars. So like, there's a game and the, and the more you get into it, the more you understand it. But I hear you loud and clear. Back to the title of this video, we're probably at our 20 minute mark where everyone's falling off anyway. Why are the prices different online than when you go into the dealership? Because it's a race to the bottom. And those dealers and the person making the decision isn't you, the general sales manager or the GM or the, you know, the new car manager. You're not making that decision. The person making that decision is blank Subaru, blank Lexus, blank Toyota. Whatever that name is, that dealer principal, that group, they're setting the policies. Yeah? Yeah. They're, I mean, you know, they, they, they approve everything. It's their store. It's their business. They have to okay it. They, you know, I, I mean who's the leader of the dealership other than the dealer? And are you really going to believe him when he's just, well, I had no idea my staff was doing stuff like that. Well, there's a guy that's got his fingers on the pulse of what's going on in his business. No, it's him. He's the one or she's the one. They know what's going on.